Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Once again, I'm Ned from Nazareth Tech Bits, also known as your friendly neighborhood basement dweller. And today in the basement layer, we're taking a look at the TP-Link AC1750 Mesh Wi-Fi Router. Now, this is the top rated uh, router that's on Amazon.ca right now. The Archer C7, 1,300 megabits at 5 gigahertz, 450 megabits per second on the 2.4 and usually TP-Link is accurate so we're going to be testing that gigabit ports it's always good to have the gigabit easy media file sharing okay good we got a USB on this support for roaming awesome <clears throat> and you know I'm not sure it's going to be as fast as D-Link only because D-Link has cooler box art on the back but we will take a look and see what we can do all right, so I'm definitely liking this packaging, how recyclable it is. Not much plastics, but I guess we got enough packed plastics on the inside. Interesting, we got a sticker for this one instead of a card like we got with all the TP-Link AX units. I wonder if this thing's going to get the same top speed as the AX units did. The AX units uh, got the same top speed as an ASUS um, AC router, and this is an AC router, so... We will see if we can get those speeds to match. And I'm pretty sure those speeds were, with an AC, ASUS, I could get um, 35 megabytes a second transfer. And that's like what I could get high end with the TP-Link uh, AX. And of course, AX is Wi-Fi 6, AC is Wi-Fi 5. So we definitely should be able to get that kind of speed now i really don't like taking this plastic off because the kind of finish that they have here is just so bad if you get a fingerprint on it it's going to be there forever so i'm going to be that guy and i'm going to leave that on there for now Ooh, look at all the freaking lights we get we get uh power uh one version of wi-fi two versions of wi-fi internet and all the plugins usb and uh wsps whatever that's called anyway so if you're if you you get this you need to plug in the internet directly here from your uh, from your modem, this won't get you internet. You have to have a modem. It looks like we get USB 2.0 power button on and off. Resets for the power goes. We got uh, three antennas, and over here we got the uh, WPS Wi-Fi for Ethernet. This is where you ho hook your computers in, of course. So yeah, let's turn on the juice and see what shakes loose, ladies. All right, so if you're new here, this is my battle station. Soak it all in. I ain't dressing it up for you, Nancy. Over on the left-hand side, that's where I keep my uh, Alexandrian backup. And over on the right, that's where I do my uh, karaoke songs and whatnot for work. You know what I'm talking about. Ultimately, what I'm going to be doing is a direct transfer over Wi-Fi. And we're going to see this unit's top speed. I could show you the top internet speed, but that has nothing to do with the maximum transfer speed. And the maximum transfer speed should be uh, enabled on this transferring units unit directly line of sight over on uh, the left and the right. We're packing in Wi-Fi 6 cards uh, internal uh, with antenna. And I'm telling you, I got line of sight directly to this uh, AC router. So let's see what the top speed is. I think we've given this unit enough time. What we got right here is about uh, 14, 20 megabytes a second. 14 to 20 megabytes a second. Okay, so that definitely isn't quite as good as the uh, AX or the Wi-Fi 6 routers. And that's pretty interesting. That's pretty interesting. But if you want the top speed, I'm telling you guys, go with the uh, ASUS. The ASUS definitely seems to have the top speed. But still, this thing ain't doing so bad itself. I'll tell you right now, your internet is never going to be this fast. At least, uh, at least not within the next five years, anyways. And don't forget, there's a difference between megabytes and megabits. Um, one megabyte is eight megabits. The IP industry always got you clinging on to to, to megs. They say megs, but they never tell you if they're selling you a megabyte or a megabit. And usually, they're talking megabit because megabits always seem bigger next up let's take a look at the the wi-fi let's run a wi-fi analysis and we can see here that this unit definitely puts itself in a nice area so what you want with your wi-fi is you want arches like this you don't want the arches to intersect with each other and you want to be in your own arch and have no one else there in a perfect world but of course that's never going to happen i don't really have too many neighbors and i got way more people that I'm sharing Wi-Fi bands with 
than I thought I would. So um, so you get the bands at the bottom. The bands at the bottom show you eg uh, exactly what channel they are. Uh, the more bands that you can have, the better it is too. But some old things don't use all of the bands very well. And that's, uh, that's a basic idea of what you got going on here. So it looks like it's good in the 2.4 and the 5G. It puts itself in a responsible arch. Okay, let's go through the setup and then check out all the awesome options we got. So, t set your time zone. You generally want dynamic IP. Um, do not clone MAC address. Most people don't need to worry about that. So, okay, so this is the place where you say, what is the name of your Wi-Fi? I'm just going to leave that the way it is. And I'm just going to leave that the way it is. And then next up... Showing us all the information. Once again, we can use the TP-Link app. Most of us like to go through the old school way. After that finishes up, we see our summary. Moving on. Now you're probably going to see this like I see it. Basically what this is saying is that your modem has a certain IP number. So this TP-Link TP unit is going to carry on with a separate IP number. So if you're having any confusion by this point, if you change the name of your router and the password, you're going to have to reconnect to it the old school way and uh, take it from there. Anyways, here we can see we have our network map. Here we get a good idea of what's going on. We get uh, the internet that's connected to the Archer. That's connected to the mesh, but I don't have any mesh devices right now. Um, there are no wire clients. This computer is the only wireless one. So if you click on these things, it'll show you exactly what's connected. And that is definitely pretty cool. You can change the name of it and say like Sun's PC, just like that. So you know what's going on, just like that. Anyways, to the USB on this unit, you can hook up printers or USB disks. I don't have any of those hooked up right now. Another interesting thing we should do, important thing we should do, is do an update. It's always good to do updates on these units. Do you want upgrade firmware? Yes. Now when you do this, you'll probably have to reboot, so I'm just going to pause this. You'll go through a download. I like how it keeps you exactly up to date with exactly what it's doing instead of just going out and waiting for you to uh, keep trying until it comes back. Okay, now that we're all updated, let's check out the advanced features. Oh, look at all that information. Oh no, now everyone's going to know my IP address. Anyways, this gives you generally all your general information. Oh, I like this though, the CPU load and the memory usage. That could have helped me out a lot better when I was younger. Anyways, let's fire through these options. Here's the internet. Here's LAN information. IPTV slash LAN. DHCP server, if anyone actually cares. Dynamic DSN. Advanced routing. Operation mode. Yeah, this is what's going on here. You can set this thing up as an access point, as you can see here, which is uh, good for some people in certain situations. Not something I need right now, though. I got a D Link mesh network going down right now. And while it's not my favorite uh, type of brand, it is my wife's. And the wife likes the D link, so we'll just keep her happy with that. WPS, wireless schedule, one mesh. Interesting. It looks like to get the mesh network going here, you have to have very particular, uh, very particular TP link units. Okay. This, this is amazing. Um, I have the Archer AX20 V1.1 and unfortunately it does not have uh, mesh, which sucks. <laughs> we get a branch for statistics. We got a guest network that we can set up. Here we get the USB settings, sharing access, printer server, offline downloads, Parental controls, if you want to make sure that your husband or children don't go uh, look at their internet prawns without your permission. Quality of service, uh, only enable this, of course, if you know exactly what your upload and your download are. Otherwise, you can really mess yourself up. We got sec security settings, 
access control, IP MAC binding, NAT forwarding, LG, application layer, oh my guys, virtual servers, port triggering, DMZ or Z, depending on what part of North America you're from. And IP version 6. Man, IP version 6. This thing was supposed to have been rolled out like, what, 20 years ago? We were Everyone was supposed to be on IPv6 by now. Oh my goodness, it's on by default. That's interesting. I know some corporations that switched over to IPv6 and had to go back to uh, version 4. Those silly, silly people. Open VPN. TP, TP, TP for my VPN. Smart life assist. Oh, yeah, you can hook it up to Alexa. That's right. I think the only reason you'd want to do this is if you wanted to start the guest network up. And here we have system tools, time settings, LED controls. If you don't like the lights being on and flickering, diagnostics. Always good to have a good diagnostics. Firmware upgrade. We've already done that. Backup and restore. Backup and restore what? Oh, your current settings. Okay, okay. So you could uh, take that to your friend's place and give them your settings if you want. Reboot schedule. Huh. I have never seen a router that had a reboot schedule. We usually just run them until there's a problem, right? Administration. System logs. Traffs, traffic statistics, which is always good to have. And system parameters. Right on. So next up, of course, is the Wi-Fi range test. And with this unit, I pretty much got the exact same range as I got with anything within the $50 to $90 price range. This is about where the range is going to drop off and be completely useless. So yeah, ultimately, at the end of the day, I can definitely recommend this router for the price. I paid 62 Canadian rupees for it. And Lord knows it'll be a lot cheaper in the U.S. dollars, but... It, uh, it gets by, the, the top speed is relatively good, and it's good for the price. So, I definitely see why it's on the best sellers. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's it from me. Now from Nasdaq, but it's like and subscribe if you like this stuff. More importantly, folks, take care of each other, will you?